Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Still Frame Review, where I come in in a circle like this and just have a still frame of my face so you don't see my lips move, and you get to imagine all the wonderful emotions I may be emoting through my voice. I'm not sure which one that was. Today I've got a suggestion from my friend Nathaniel slash Nate, who would like to know my thoughts on the last live action Marvel show to hit Disney Plus, Loki. Picking up after the events in Avengers Endgame where Loki stole the Tesseract, by his escaping he disrupts the sacred timeline and is immediately arrested by the Time Variance Authority, or TVA. Normally, he would be pruned, that is, erased from existence. However, there is another Loki variant out there causing the TVA all sorts of mischief, and Time Agent Mobius gives Loki the offer to help them find the other variant, thus paying for his crimes. So Loki and Mobius team up and become involved in an even bigger mystery involving the TVA and the very nature of the sacred timeline itself. So how is Loki? As far as the show looks, it's one of the most imaginative and creative designs I've ever seen for a Marvel property. The TVA's design is especially fantastic. The 1970s aesthetic really drives home the bureaucratic side of the TVA, but also gives me strong Doctor Who vibes, as does the rest of the show. It has very distinctive cinematography, willing to go symmetrical and artsy, not just a bland over-the-shoulder reverse that you may see in something like, say, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And the score is also fantastic, a very classic old sci-fi feeling. Tom Hiddleston was great as Loki, as always, and Owen Wilson as Mobius was a great addition to the cast. I really like to see his and Loki's relationship play out on screen. But I also really like Gugu Mabatha Ra as Ravona Renslayer. I'm sure I'm butchering at least one of those two names. I think her and Mobius' relationship on screen is even more interesting than the Loki-Mobius dynamic. Sophia DiMartino plays Sylvie, Loki's other main on-screen counterpart, and uh, I don't really care one way or the other about her performance. She's like, fine, I guess. Uh, I disliked Wunmi Masaku, again I'm sure I'm butchering that, as Hunter B-15, the TVA agent who initially arrests Loki. She just was like reading lines, it did not work at all. The writing is sometimes funny and entertaining, but other times it's cliche and a little boring. It's kind of a mixed bag. And the story feels unnecessarily stretched at times. For instance, conversation scenes often go on way too long, and if you've seen the series finale, you know what I'm talking about. And characters will often end up right back where they started, seemingly not moving the story forward, and kind of a way to tip the budget department's hand, letting you know that, oh, they only had money for this one location, so we gotta like use it twice or ten times, something like that. And while this was still a very high budget production, and the visual effects did all look good, the filmic choices still kept tipping that hand like I was saying. For instance, there are a lot of locked off VFX shots where the camera does not move, and it kind of makes the story feel small. A locked off shot is like ten times easier and cheaper to pull off in a visual effects context than a moving shot. And I think this is just an inside problem of people not using the budget efficiently. For instance, they had this physical lamp on set to represent Miss Minutes, the clock hologram who appears throughout, but instead of just erasing the lamp and replacing it with a Miss Minutes CGI model like they thought they were going to do, it turns out the light did not work at all. And so they had to replace the entire scene with CGI, including a CGI Miss Minutes. Or how there was this one long elaborate shot at the end of episode 3 where Loki and Sylvie are trying to race to a spaceship, but by the end of that giant long shot, the spaceship gets destroyed. Warners like that are incredibly complex and expensive to do, and really, it was completely unnecessary. You could just show Loki and Sylvie seeing the spaceship, and then the spaceship gets destroyed. It's the exact same information conveyed. You're just wasting time and money trying to pull off a fancy camera stunt like this. 
While say One Division and Falcon and Winter Soldier felt like self-contained stories, the season of Loki felt just like a setup for the rest of the Marvel Phase 4 movies. If you've, again, seen the series finale, you know what I'm talking about. Hopefully they're going to do a season two though, so maybe the Loki TV show will become its own star and feel more self-contained. While the specifics of the show are very unique and different, the overall entertainment value I would say is pretty par the course for Marvel. I'd say it's not quite as good as WandaVision, but it's definitely better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier, so it's, you know, kind of middle of the road, and I'm gonna give it a C for Clock Lizards. It makes sense if you've seen the show. Those were my thoughts on Loki. Have you seen Loki? And if you have, comment below and let me know what your thoughts of the show were. Also, let me know of any other movies or television shows you'd like me to review. This is Joseph Unix signing off. See you later.